and I can say this with complete conviction. I have listed and transacted properties whilst I've been travelling in Western Australia that have been listing and selling back home in South Australia. Now, I'm really upfront about this. Alrighty, well what's going on guys, it's Bori here from EXP Realty and today we're on the Alpha State of Mind podcast, it's my first podcast and I have a very very exciting special guest here today, Chris Jansen, the man, how are you mate? Brother, uh, firstly thank you for having me on, I feel incredibly privileged to be on the first number one podcast of your series and uh, I'm excited to to see the growth of this. I know your tech innovation um, in this space is quite phenomenal. I learn a lot from you, but mate, I'm great. Life is awesome. And thanks, mate. I'm just, <laughs> mate, I'm, well, we're going to talk about that, I'm sure. We will, and, we uh, will. I'm looking forward to having a good chat between best mates. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, with this one, the Alpha State of Mind podcast, if we can just re, re, uh, go back onto it, we're going to talk everything. It's not just about real estate. Now, the reason why I've asked you to come on today is because you're always interviewing people. Uh, I wanted to interview you back. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, could you tell me a little the bit about yourself? Turn. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yep. So, mate, first and foremost, I'm a husband. I'm, I'm a father. Um, I'm a, an award-winning real estate agent. Um, I'm a director of my own business from sales through to property management. I'm incredibly blessed to have this vehicle that powers my business for sales EXP and the alignment and collaboration it's brought me uh, to great people like you in life. Um, and mate, look, I just like to keep things really simple in life. I just want to run my business my way and make sure that my lifestyle is how I want it to be and my clients just have a tremendous experience whenever they interact with my business. Because as you can see, I, I love a lot of this stuff behind me, lifestyle, and that's exactly what work should be for you. What you do should be to create the lifestyle of your choosing for you and your family. Um, I've been in real estate now, coming on 15 years. I started in the marketplace just as the GFC economy, the world economy changed. So it was a, a nice little introduction into real estate. When the average days on market was 93 days. And if you got three buyers through a home open inspection, you're kissing the second buyer through as they came through the door. Um, I've seen every marketplace through that time. Um, and yeah, mate, I, I just, I, I love where my career, my business is at right now more so than ever before i've been a former business owner yeah heavily stressed out burnt out unhappy didn't have the lifestyle i wanted tried to create it but was heavily restricted i feel now for the first time in a long time i'm living my life's full fulfillment of the perfect balance and i know it sounds cliche of work and lifestyle and family happiness yeah well that's amazing to hear man i mean how many people how many agents can actually say and do what you're doing at the moment because obviously right now you're traveling australia and you are a youtuber you are a professional youtuber you've got a youtube account let's put on a plug right here yns can we show everyone yns the the brand back there so if you guys are into uh (laughs) traveling traveling around australia you can actually go there subscribe to them i'll put the links in um in the description you go subscribe to him it's amazing i've been watching it, i've been following it and yes this content is amazing. Be. what is yns about so like i love technology mate as much as you do but you're a different generation so you're ahead you're ahead of me in that space but I, i'm look i'm an 80s baby i give most things a good red hot crack i wouldn't say i'm perfect at it but i think sometimes so many people focus on perfection and it gets in the way of uh, progress. Yep. I just I just focus on progress, mate. I, I don't do everything perfect. But um, we love as a family to do a, a lot of exploring. So we love camping. I love fishing. Like it's, I'm addicted 100%. to it. Like it's, <laughs> I feel completely free when I'm out fishing. It cleanses my soul, my mind. So um, we love touring exploring caravanning you name it, everything we live for the outdoors seeing our beautiful country and everything it has to offer a number of years ago we've got a number of family that live interstate and we thought we'd love to be able to share with them our experiences so i started just vlogging almost our trips and our journeys where we're going and what we're doing because a lot of my interstate um, relatives aren't of the generation where youtube is second nature to them Right, they're still yeah. watching the SBS news and the ABC news. Yeah. 
but I wanted a, I wanted a platform and a means. Exactly, man. I yeah. wanted a, um, a platform and means where I could share with them as if they were with us during yeah. the, our experiences. So I started just filming, capturing a lot of it. But then I thought, you know, there's no point capturing all this footage if you're not really editing it. So I started to immerse myself into the editing side and. James King, who was the content creator for Harcourt's corporate office in South Australia at the time, video guru, I just kind of reached out to him and he gave me some general information and I sort of then fell into the editing component and the more and more I did it, the more and more I immersed myself into it, the more and more I loved it and I almost found a second passion because it complements my fishing and bringing all that footage and content together and I can share it with my family. Yeah, so I really love the editing part now, mate. It's consuming, yeah. takes a lot of time, but um, I really, really enjoy. It's like you get to relive the experiences again, because sometimes when you're yeah. outdoors, fishing, camping, exploring, stuff happens quickly. So for me to be able to rewatch the footage and as I'm editing, it's almost like I get to relive that experience all over again. Mate, that's awesome. I mean, I know you're you're using you know all these Premiere Pro that you say I am a tech genius. I don't even know how to use Premiere Pro. I use I use Filmora. It's a uh, it's like the new version yeah. of it. So I, I give you credit. That's amazing. Um, for anyone who's looking to follow Chris on his journey around Australia right now, and how many people can actually say that they're a real estate agent working full time and still get to go out? And do all this so if anyone wants to follow him yns search it up i'll put the link somewhere here um but yeah you know you're doing all this right now yeah um and you're still running a full-time job in real estate and running the corporate because you are the adelaide licensee um uh yeah. what, what, what what's that all about and really how how are you able to do all this well, you know maybe explain to the viewers what cloud-based technology is and stuff like that well, mate, I wanted to do this years and years ago, right? And yeah. I was a traditional business owner. And as I say, the old saying, I felt like this big tree with a big root stuck in one location. Yeah. And I couldn't go anywhere. And if I did go anywhere, there were spot fires or where were you or we needed you or... And I just felt like the business was so heavily reliant on me. It just didn't complement my lifestyle, yeah. right? And I see some amazing people in our industry doing some incredible things but they can't count on one hand how many times they've been on a holiday with their family or got away, because all they do is they just work, work, work. And I didn't want to be part of that that perceived normal trajectory in our industry. Um, I wanted a work-life balance that complemented each other. But um, So yeah, I, I decided, I could see the evolution coming, mate. Like I was looking at different models and what was happening in you know, America and a little bit what was coming into the Eastern Seaboard States. And I could see the evolution in our industry was, it wasn't coming, it was here. Oh, wow. And I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, mate, as you know, I like to be at the forefront of innovation. I like to build the wave, not ride the wave when it's at its peak. And I've seen a real opportunity here with the cloud-based technology that's now available within the real estate industry. Mm. Um, and fast forward from when I exited out of my business, traditional business three, nearly three years ago, here I am, I'm sitting in a caravan traveling Australia <laughs> with my family, supporting a network of, um, you know, 30 agents strong in South Australia, giving them all their compliance, their support, um, helping them with their growth aspirations through to their marketing, prospecting, digital assets, whatever. Because the reality is, mate, and I can say this with complete conviction, I have listed and transacted properties whilst I've been traveling in Western Australia that have been listing and selling back home in South Australia. Now, I'm really upfront about this. If a client rings me and says, Chris, we want to list our property for sale, ready to go, I, I let them know, guys, I'm traveling Australia at the moment with my family. However, I understand with all the technology that we've got available right now to us, I can still do everything for you, okay? The only thing that I need my team to do for us back home is be my eyes and ears on the ground during an open inspection and a viewing. That's it, mm. right? So I'm very upfront about that. And clients, one of the things the last six months being on the road has taught me is clients don't give a shit about where you are, <laughs> right? What yeah. car you're driving and how you look and what your mood is on the day. They just wanna they just wanna get the service yeah. and the outcome to be able to go to where they wanna go to. Yeah. Right? That's all. So remove all that other noise of all oh, the branding and the marketing and the shiny this and the brochures that. They don't give a shit. They just want to know that you're there at every step of the process. You're going to hold their hand. You're going to service them. 
service the shit out of them, like yeah. over service them, whether you're in Adelaide or in Western Australia or not. But more importantly, just negotiate the result and the outcome. Yeah. They don't care how you do it, just get the result, get the outcome to help us go from A to B. And sometimes, I think as agents, we confuse all that noise between that A to B. And this trip has helped me really clearly understand how to simplify just keeping about the client, the five W's that we always talk about, yeah. the who, what, when, where, why that we focus on in helping them get from A to B. It doesn't yeah. matter where I am for that yeah. to happen. And we've done a couple of uh, um, homes for sales together, some deals together, and I can definitely see the way yeah. you run your business. It still hasn't changed. Everything is, if anything, I've learned more from you than, um, you know, if we weren't to work on together like in, in this platform where you're away, do you know what I mean? So, you know, you're project managing everything, but at the same time, you're giving me advice on how you, we, we would run things. So, you know, it's, it's phenomenal to be able to do that. While you're away, where, like, where, where are you at, at, at the moment? Still in Western Australia? <laughs> We're in Exmouth, which uh, it's um, 25 degrees, shorts, singlet, thongs, pretty much every day. But you're right, mate, like just hearing you say that, Hearing you say that, I feel like I can give more time to people like you in my network now than I ever could. Because let's be honest, most business owners are the primary sole listing and transacting agent. And they're generally yeah. the highest performing agent in that office because they are the business owner. Yeah. So they don't really have a lot of time that they can dedicate to really be there hands on full time to support their staff. Yeah. And that's what I've been really blessed and fortunate being able to do is the XP SA licensee now. Like, you can pick up a Zoom call with me at 7 in the morning, 7 p.m. at night. Yeah. I'm there for you. And we do do dedicated. that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 100%, 100%. Now, for the viewers who are watching, because there will be viewers who are watching, um, they don't actually know what EXP is because we're not just another real estate yeah. company. Could you give us a bit of a snapshot of what EXP actually is and what your role as a state licensee is? I think you already covered that already, but yeah. just let us know what, what EXP is. Okay, the simplest way I explain this to any agent that reaches out to me about EXP is this. Think of what you're getting now in an office environment. You can have all that and more for $220 a month. And you can yeah. do it all from the comfort of your own home. And you still get all your own dedicated support people, all your techs taken care of, all your payrolls taken care of, all your account and supplier invoices are done. You don't have to worry about trust accounting. You don't have to worry about settling properties or processing listing. Everything that you're accustomed to getting in an office environment and paying 30, 40, 50% in some instances to get that, scrap it. You can get all the same for $220 a month here in Australia. That's the only, the simplest way I can explain, right? The other thing that you need to be mindful with EXP is it's, um, it's a vehicle that was built by agents for agents and it's owned by its agents, right? Yeah. So we're not, um, we're not a business that goes out there and attracts leads or looks to source sellers and buyers. We are purely a model that is there for you and I as the agents for us to be able to do what we want to do. Work for ourselves, be our own bosses, create the lifestyle we want and do business our way, okay? The other thing you need to think of EXP as though, it's uh, a way of diversifying additional income streams and means through the transactions you and I are doing every year. Yeah. Now, we won't go into the, those particulars, but it just seems like this. You earn commission right now for transaction you and I, right? That's it. Until your career is up and you retire as an agent, that's your only income stream, unless you use that income from your commissions to do other things like maybe buy shares or buy properties and so forth. With EXP, we have three other pillars that you can create additional wealth from the commissions you're creating of the transactions that you're already doing per annum every year for the rest of your career. Um, now, my role as licensee mate is two things, compliance and growth. Number one, I make sure our guys and girls feel absolutely supported unconditionally with compliance. Um, so they, they, they know someone's not looking over them, but checking and yeah. supporting them in what they're doing with their paperwork. So I, I check every contract that comes through. I check all their documentation. I, I thoroughly check all your paperwork so that before it's a proven process, everything is 100% correct. Because it's like anything, the more eyes that check over something, the less chances there are for risk. Well, that's what my eyes is there to do for our agents. Um, and it's completely different from, say, a Cheryl on front desk. <laughs> 
Cheryl doesn't check the paperwork. Cheryl just processes to get that file off her desk and onto the next desk, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's no compliance checking going on. So that's part of my role. The second part is a two-stage part of growth. Number one, your individual growth as an agent, yeah. right? So how do you go from maybe XGCI to YGCI? Or how do we go from just making commission only to building revenue through other means or building your own property management assets? So your individualized growth aspirations as an agent, your why, your why is different to my why, but yeah, course, helping yeah. your why grow as an agent. Uh, and the second part to that is helping agents um, collaborate and build a team of like-minded entrepreneurial agents with themselves as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. And I mean, I love being in your team because sometimes I can just pick up the phone and go, hey, Chris, can you just run me through the situation quickly? I mean, the mentors that we have in EXP is phenomenal. For me, who was a sales associate, you know, doing like 50 grand a year to now coming over here, hitting six figures with your mentorship and everyone else's mentorship. We've got phenomenal training every Tuesday. We've got our icon training. We're learning from the best to pick and choose what we want to put into our business. No one's forcing it down your throat. I mean, I've learned structure from you. I've learned, you know, how to build relationship with Bjorn and of my skills of digital marketing, I can offer that back into the community as well. So with EXP, I think there's always so yeah. much to learn all the time. So you, it's funny because we work from home, or a lot of us work from home and work in our own office, but we still feel more connected than being in an office. So it's a little bit weird like that, hey? Mate, I could remember <clears throat> like dragging myself into the office, right? I'll be really upfront. 50% of the people there I liked, I'd get along with, I'd go have a beer with. The other 50% of them, I didn't want to be around them, to yeah, be honest with you. They right. weren't my vibe, they weren't my tribe, right? But I still had to rock up and be there and be nice and polite and I knew some were fake to me and vice versa, whatever. Yeah. This I feel is the most authentic, pure, Purest relationship of collaboration I've ever felt throughout the 15 years of my career in real estate with the people we've got because they're not on my payroll we're not on each other's payroll there's no financial conflict because financial conflict we know what that does for relationships yeah. it, it eventually ends up somewhere um, good bad or ugly but you're right I feel more connected with the people within our network than I have with any other business I've been involved in throughout my whole I guess working life, but also yeah. more so my real estate life. Oh, definitely. Uh, because every day I get up, I go to my own office. I don't answer to anyone, right? I don't have to choose who I have to see or not on that day, right? And I can choose what training, what mentoring, what coaching I want to jump on for that day, for that week. It's my choice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mate. For me, COVID was a a poorly wrapped silver lining gift yeah. because it made me appreciate when I worked from home more during COVID. I was like. There's something in this. There's something in this from working from home because yeah. people don't care about your office anymore. They just want the service, they want the experience, they want the result. How you get it is irrelevant to them. They don't give a shit about it. Well, people say that all the time. Hey, like I've had um, people try to recruit me into their, their franchises and stuff like that. And they said, well, you don't even have an office. And I've always said, well, when do we actually meet clients at our office? It's very rare. We always go to appraisals at their home and if we're signing contracts, it's either digitally or at people's houses or in the houses of auctions that we're selling. So it's irrelevant anyway. I love yeah. it because I get to start work and finish work whenever yeah. I want. And I, I feel more comfortable in my own environment. I get anxiety thinking about driving to the driving to an office in traffic, um, knowing that I've got so yeah, many man. calls to make and all that stuff. Um, I mean, you've really hit the nail on the head in the side I of had the that. questions that I, I had. think. Oh, you go. I think, I, I think for me, and, and I get that question, mate, they're like, oh, you don't have an office. And you know what I say? That's because I choose to stay at home more to be with my loved ones more, my yeah. wife, our yeah. children. Now, is that not more important to you? Or, like, do you need to be around your mates in the office more so? And I find people that need office, there are a select few people that need an office, right? Yeah. For them, it's maybe the later stages of their career and just going in and having that morning coffee for an hour with the people around them is important to them. I totally respect that, mm. right? Um, there are people that need that micromanagement to keep yeah. them on track. Put how many appraisals you've done on the board, how many listings, how many sold, how many under contract. You need to tick this sheet to make sure you've done that many calls and show it to Like people need that micromanagement. I get it. Yeah. I don't though, and yeah. you don't. No. So for, for people that are like that, that back themselves, 
um, and happy to go all in to do so, this model is the perfect model if you want to be a self-sufficient entrepreneur of age. Yeah. Plain and yeah. simple. Um, and at the end of the day, those that say, you know, well, you don't have an office, well, are you choosing your office more so than being at home with your loved ones? Like, what's more important in life? Because we all got an expiry date, and yeah. I'd rather be on deathbed next to you, Bori, looking back and going, we spent as much time as possible with our family versus the office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 100% I agree with that and just when you were saying about we're writing our numbers on the board that was giving me anxiety straight away <laughs> no more of yeah, that well, I used to make people do that I used yeah. to make people do that you know why because if there was no runs on the board oh shit John's leaving there's no appraisals on the board for the month what's going on watch him check his data check his email like that's micromanagement 101 now if you need that that's cool that's not for me and that's not my leadership style anymore yep 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 now just to recap that for a little bit you were a business owner before um now coming as a business owner you sort of explained how it's propelled your life like exp has propelled your life and stuff like that but i get a lot of yeah. questions I was, I was speaking to a business owner the other well a couple of months ago and he goes well i'm as a business owner on 100 percent of everything i make was exp has on 75 percent which is phenomenal and then we cap at yeah. 100 uh, 100k gti but then when you actually break it down, uh, now I want to ask you as a business owner, because as a business owner, you would have had so many expenses and overheads to, to run your business, but with EXP, it's only costing you 220 per month, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would a business owner benefit from coming over to EXP? I'm talking about the principal itself. Okay. So no business owners on 100%, right? Straight up. Okay. Yep, it's yep. impossible. Okay, so you might be able to pay yourself 100% maybe at certain periods, right? Yeah. So most business owners generally are on a certain split, right? Yeah. So for me, I was paying myself 65%, which was probably really conservative as a business owner. I'm sure there's business owners that are out there on 70, 80%, whatever, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. But the real objective is, is you pay yourself a certain percentage, a certain percentage stays in your business because it is your asset. You're putting your own money in your pocket every week, every fortnight, every month, as a business owner, yeah, right? So if you're not, I don't know how much validity there is behind that, um, but the view is to hopefully at the end of the quarter, pay yourself a dividend from your profits, okay? Now, if you don't pay yourself a dividend, well, that's a risk you take as a business owner, okay, at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, when I worked out my numbers, what we got paid as dividends to what I keep more now, so more so in my commissions, I'm ahead. I'm ahead in paying myself more commission through the XP model than I was trying to chase the dividend each quarter. And a dividend can be divvied up. If you're the only business owner, well cool, you keep 100% of that dividend. But if you've got two, three, four dividends, it's like everything, the dividend, the percentage or the slice of it gets smaller and smaller as you're sharing it among partnerships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I was ahead through the commissions above what I was earning as a director and business owner and the dividends each quarter. But no partnerships, right? So instead of having one third of something, I've now got 100% of it. I'm yep. keeping it all myself. Um, the other thing as well though, businesses need cash injection, mate. Like, you know, there's not a time that I've been a business owner where we haven't had to put money into the business because cash flow has dropped. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give you an example. February was the worst month of the year for us, right? Because it's the back end of Christmas. Yeah. Our business generally went in the hole between twenty and thirty thousand dollars in February. Okay, so that means you still got to pay all your expenses, but you got no settlements coming through because everyone had December and Christmas off. So where does that twenty thirty grand come from to keep admin um, staff paid, marketing team paid, okay. rent paid, bills paid? You got to put money in yeah, as a okay. business owner and a director. So. 100% sure at some point throughout the year you might be able to take 100% commission here or there off your settlements. Yep. I can assure you that there isn't the opportunity for any business owner in our industry to keep 100% of 100% off of every transaction. Mm. Now that's not taking into consideration franchise and royalty fees. Like my 65% was 8% after a franchise fee. So really I was 65% of 92%, right? So that's a bit diff. There's eight percent that's gone off your bottom line straight away. Yeah. So um, I find with business owners, mate, the best thing with EXP, it takes away all the noise that comes with a business and the stresses, like you know your supply runs, 
is a stressful mm. week when you've got to pay all your supplies, all your back end's done for you. You can still create revenue through having a team. You can still keep your property management separate because let's be honest, there's no real value in a sales business, right? As a business owner, the only value is in your rent roll. That's it. Okay, yep. The value in your sales business, well, that's you doing the business anyway, right? Mm. Listing and transacting every month, whether you're with EXP or business owner, that is one, I guess, pillar of income for the rest of our lives. What happens if something happens to you? As a business owner, commission listing and only selling at 100%. If something happens to you, you're sick for three months, you that income's it. gone. Yeah. That income's gone. But all those overheads for your business are still there. So for me, it's it's not just about 100% all the time. It's about lifestyle, commission, yes, safety and simplicity, mm. and almost recession-proofing your business. Because right now, I'm traveling Australia, right? I'm not listing and transacting anywhere near the volume that I used to, but I'm still able to keep my business doors open. Yeah. How many business owners do you know in our industry that could take 12 months out of their business and that business will still be there, ticking there by the time they get back? There's only one person I can think of, great man, Anthony Toot, right? He and his wife chose to travel quite some time ago and they retired early, but their business, Toop and Toop, still happening. I don't know many other traditional real estate businesses and business owners that are able to do that. Like I am at 39, I've still got my real estate business back home open, yeah. right? Because my costs are down here and not up here and I'm taking 12 months off for gap year. So that would be my question to that business owner, mate, is, you know, could you take a gap year? Or if you took three or six months off, what would that mean for your business? Because it's not always about 100%, brother. Mate, that is phenomenal. And, you know, it's an insight to people like myself who hasn't really been in that situation before. I mean, I can see the benefits of a business owner coming over. Essentially, they're saving money on the bottom line already. Um, so for yeah. agents, it's already better as well. So, I mean, you're a great husband, great father, and you're traveling around Australia, loving life. You're a YNS, you're a YouTuber, you're living your best life right now. Um, if anybody was thinking about getting into this industry with the exp i suppose like an agent or a business owner what should they do from here find someone that you connect with like and what i mean by that i know it sounds cliche like when i talk to agents it's not about the commission split it's not about the traveling australia it's their why and generally it's because we all have a certain pain point in life like my pain point was i was unhappy i was stressed out I didn't really have the lifestyle that I wanted to choose, that I thought being a business owner would enable me to do. So I lost four years where I had to reevaluate my whole life and relaunch again. So really, the first advice I would get is scrap all that noise around the commissions and splits and branding and all that, and really harmoniously understand deep to your core your why, what's making you feel the way that you are. Um, when you understand that, it's easier to make sound and sensible decisions. Uh, once you understand that why, then maybe connect with somebody who shares those similar why values to you. So for me, I'd say, look, if you like lifestyle, balance, structure, you don't want to be stressed out, burnt out, you want to be a good dad, wife, husband, whatever, like I would be a great, I I'm going to relate to that a lot. So I'd be a great alliance with you. For you, mate, it's, it's digital, tech innovation, new age do you know what i mean yeah. so align yourself with people that have similar qualities to you in life and this is the unfortunate thing and we're just mentioning it before the difference with exp and a business owner is exp every agent now competes at a business owner's level they just do yeah. right so this i don't have to be a business owner any longer because exp gives me all of that and more without all the, the worries and stresses of having to be a business owner okay so all our agents compete at that level um but yeah, I think just, you know, we used to walk into an office and have to build a somewhat of an alliance with people that we didn't really want to be there with, but I just had to be there to rock up and turn up and be there. Whereas now, I just surround myself with people that are like-minded, that are similar to me. And that's who I want in my tribe. That's my vibe that's around me now. So an office can often create environments where you're forced to be around people you probably don't want to. Whereas with this model, I choose who I surround myself with and who I don't. Yeah. So make that choice. Understand your why and choose who you want to surround yourself with. If you focus on those two things, all that other stuff will take care of itself. It'll fall into place. Oh, 100%.
Well, well, look, I think that really wraps it up, Chris. I really appreciate you jumping on my first episode ever of uh, the Upper <laughs> Seven One podcast. Privileged. We're going to put Privileged, all your brother. details here. So if anyone wants to get in contact with Chris Jansen, they can get in contact with you. Um, what's your number, mate? Your number? Zero four two three two eight three two six five. And I still, even though I'm on the road, answer this every time. Beautiful. So, mate. Um, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity, mate. I'm privileged to be the first on your podcast series. I'm looking forward to seeing this grow. And I'm super inspired to see your continued growth from sales associate to self-made glory now, mate. Uh, you know, I, I I put you up there high among the stars and I really admire you, mate. I'm, I'm honored to be a good mate and best friend of yours. Beautiful. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, man. No worries. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for joining us.